Good day everyone. Welcome to Prayer Watch. Thank you for joining us today. Let us start with a prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you today. As once again you have gathered us in faith in the name of Jesus Christ to look into your word and to reflect upon them and to also receive your message for each one of us. Father, we ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds so that we will be cleansed of all unrighteousness. Please listen to the silent prayers of each one as they confess their sins and ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, Father, for reminding us once again that you are faithful to your covenant people who put their trust in Jesus Christ, that you will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for paving the way for unhampered communion with you in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hebrews 7. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also, king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi, who become priests, to collect a tenth from the people, that is, from their fellow Israelites, even though they also are descended from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi. Yet he collected a tenth from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life. For it is declared, you are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect. And a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without any oath, but he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind, you are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office, but because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore he's able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weakness. But the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. Where are your eyes fixed on? Saan nakatuon ang inyong mga mata? Literally speaking, to fix one's eyes on something is to gaze or stare upon something or someone intently or with curiosity. To look at something 
longer than the usual casual glance. So literally speaking, in our day and age, here in our country, I would dare guess that many of us here, from the children to the seniors alike, have their eyes fixed on their gadgets. Their eyes are focused on their gadgets longer than they probably are when talking to each other, talking to their parents, their children, or family members face to face in the course of the day. But more than the literal is the figurative sense of the phrase, fix your eyes on something or someone. There is no more physical Jesus that we can look at physically when we say we fix our eyes on Jesus. When he, when he ascended into heaven, Acts 1 says that a cloud hid him from the sight of the disciples and as they continued to look intently at the sky, two men dressed in white stood beside them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but he will come back someday. We Christians are quite familiar with the, with the Hebrews 12 verse 2, which reads, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Itoon natin ang ating paningin kay Jesus na siyang pinagmumulan at kabuuan ng ating pananampalataya. The phrase, fix your eyes, as used here, is in the figurative expression or sense. The intent of the writer of Hebrews was to encourage believers to fix their eyes on Jesus, meaning to focus their thoughts on his superiority and glory, to pay attention to his words, his life, his teaching, and his spirit that is in them, to keep faith in him and his promises, to keep trusting, to be loyal to him, and not look elsewhere for their greatest treasure, to cling to him in times of trouble, and as well, as in times of temptation, to set their sights on Him, making Him as their ultimate goal, to pin their hopes on Him. And so we find in the book of Hebrews some of the most exalted words in the Bible, expressing Jesus' superiority in power, authority, in glory, in beauty, all the reasons why we Christians must fix our eyes on Him. And when we do this, we will be able to defeat bad thoughts with something greater and good. As Philippians 4, 8 exhorts us, and in Romans 12, 21, where it says to overcome evil with good. From Peter's ex experience as he walked on the water toward Jesus, we learn that when he let his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. And figuratively speaking, when we too let our eyes stray from Jesus, we will most likely start sinking in the ocean of worldly cares and ungodly thoughts, succumb to temptation and panic under pressure. Now one of the most captivating studies of the superiority of our Lord Jesus Christ is the one found in Hebrews 7, where he is taught as our high priest in the order of Melchizedek ang ating pinakapunong hari ayon sa pagkapari ni Melchizedek. We are quite familiar with the role of the priest as it was in the biblical practice of the law of Moses. 
we know that the priest was the mediator o tagapamagitan between God and his people. The priest brings the people's sacrifices of bulls and lambs to offer at the altar of the temple for the forgiveness of their sins. He also represents his fellow Jews before God in prayer. He offers to, to God their prayers on, be, on behalf of the rest of the people. And in turn, God releases his forgiveness as the priest sprinkles the blood of the animals in the Holy of Holies and pronounces the assurance of God's forgiveness for his people. And only those from the tribe of Levi or the descendants of Levi could ever qualify as priests, as commanded by God. However, Jesus Christ, our high priest, does not trace his genealogy from the tribe of Levi. We know that he is from the tribe of Judah. Instead, Therefore, he does not, he is not fashioned after human priests. He is indeed superior to any human priest because he comes from the order of Melchizedek. Now, who is Melchizedek? Melchizedek is introduced as early as Genesis 14, in the time of Abraham. And after, we are told that after Abraham defeated the enemies of his nephew Lot, Melchizedek suddenly appears uh, out of nowhere to bless Abraham. He is said to be king of Salem and the priest of God Most High. And thereupon, Abraham gives a tenth of everything that he had to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed Abram. Now, as Hebrews 7 says, it is always the greater who blesses the lesser. And so we know that Melchizedek here is greater than Abram. So let's take a look at this character, this personality, Melchizedek. There are only three references from the Bible. The first, as I said, is in Genesis 14, where the word priest that describes him is also first mentioned ever in the Bible. Then in Psalm 110 verse 4, which is mentioned or referred to in Hebrews 7, which is our scripture reading. And of course, the third and the last time that uh, Melchizedek's name is mentioned is in Hebrews 7 that we have read. Firstly, Hebrews 7 says that his name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Melchizedek, king of righteousness, and that he, he was king of Salem. Salem, which means peace. Now, Jesus' priesthood in the order of Melchizedek means that Jesus bears the perfect righteousness of God, his sinless perfection. And isn't Jesus Christ the Messiah who is also the Prince of Peace? The Prince of Peace, the ruler of Shalom. Isn't it his righteousness that is imputed upon us believers? And isn't it his peace? that guards our hearts and minds, and that which is beyond human comprehension? Isn't he the giver of his peace that the things of the world cannot give? For he says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. In me you may have peace. In addition, Melchizedek is said to be without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God. He remains a priest forever, so he reflects Jesus being eternal, forever living. 
without genealogy. Walang pinanggaling ang ama o ina. Walang nauna sa kanya. Buhay sa walang hanggan. Living and alive. No beginning and end. Unlike the human priests who were many because all of them died at some point in time and some other priest had to take over. Jesus, however, lives forever and He always intercedes for us. Walang katapusan ang kanyang pamamagitan sa atin at sa Diyos, Ama. Verse 25 says that because He lives forever, He has a permanent priesthood. Hindi natatapos ang kanyang pagiging pari o namamagitan sa atin. Therefore, He is able to save completely those who come to God through Him. Save completely meaning save to the uttermost. Completely saved or saving us from all that humanity ever needs to be saved from. Saved to the very end. Hanggang sa katapos-tapusan ng ating buhay dito sa mundo. Until we see God face to face. The sacrifice of animals commanded in the Levitical laws that God gave to Moses were not able to save the people completely from their sins. For year after year, they had to sacrifice the blood of animals. But Jesus Christ sacrificed His very life once for all. Hindi na mauulit minsan lang ay mabisa para sa ating kapatawaran kailan paman. Secondly, Melchizedek as reflecting Jesus' priesthood is in the sense that Jesus is worshipped above all, given the tense of everything. The tense being a, a symbol of worship of God. To Melchizedek belonged a tithe of everything that Abraham received. And in the coming of Jesus as Lord and Savior, to him as well belongs all the worship. Appointed as priest with an oath from God to confirm his promise to leave us without a doubt to impress upon our hearts. That is it. Jesus was in appointed as priest with an oath from God. An oath being a, a word from the Lord to confirm his promise in order to leave us human beings without a doubt. To impress upon our hearts indeed that his word is true. The human priests were appointed by virtue of the law. But Jesus was appointed by God with his very mouth and by an oath that doubly assures us of the trustworthiness of his promise, his promises in Christ. In Christ, all of God's promises are a yes. In Psalm 110 verse 4, a prophetic declaration about Jesus' appointment by God the Father. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, herein is the revelation of God about that Melchizedek who is, after all, the prefiguring of Jesus Christ himself. As some theologians say, he was the pre-incarnate appearance of of Jesus himself. Siya yung uh, pagpapakita no? ng Panginoong Jesus, ang kanyang pagpunta dito sa lupa bago siya naging tao o nagkatawang tao. Here is our Lord Jesus, our High Priest, who is our forever advocate to God the Father. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is there anyone else to compare with Jesus? Is there anyone else on whom our eyes must be fixed in these trying times? Is there anyone else in whom our intellect needs to be engaged in much more than any other when it comes to 
the understanding of our faith, of the Bible, of our lives in Christ? And is there anyone else on whom our eyes must be fixed even during our victorious days? Is there anyone who occupies a position even so remotely deserving of our attention and faith? Mga kapatid, sino ang ating pinag-uukulan ng pansin sa ating pananampalataya? Sino ang ating pinakikinggan? Sino ang ating pinag-aaralan? At kaninong salita ang ating pinaniniwalaan at binibigyan ng halaga? Pinag-uukulan ng pansin. No one and no one indeed, no one else can compare with our Lord. So let us do away with the thoughts, the characters, the personalities and teachings that tend to distract us and cause our eyes and hearts to veer away from Him and His message. There is so much more about Jesus Christ that the book of Hebrews and even the whole Bible talks about Jesus Christ. The superiority, the supremacy of Him who is the Son of God, who is God Himself, our Savior and our Lord. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Ituon natin ang ating pansin sa Diyos. A whole lifetime is not enough to get to enjoy the beauty of His loveliness, His peace and joy. If we do, we will be able to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Every day of our lives, every season of our lives, until the very end, when we receive the fullness of joy in the success of His mission for us and in seeing Him face to face in all His glory. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Our great high priest, in the order of Melchizedek, that perfection that embodies him. Thank you, Lord, for your message for us today. That indeed, we are not alone. And that indeed we need to fix our eyes on Jesus because He is high above. He is glory. He is the one true God. Lord, we pray that we may not be tricked or tempted into doing otherwise. Lord, forgive us when we are easily tempted to look to the left or to the right, to substitute Him, Lord, with other philosophies and even other personalities, purportedly even in the name of Jesus, who rob Him of the highest place in our honor, in our exaltation of the one true God. Lord, there is so, there's so much that Jesus Christ holds for us. In Him is the treasure of all wisdom. And yet, sometimes we prefer to, um, to settle for something so much less than Him, or even something that is diametrically opposed to Him. Panginoon, tulungan niyo po kami na magkaroon ng uh, focus sa Panginoong Jesus dahil hindi hamak na napakadakila niya sa lahat at marami pa kaming dapat malaman sa liksikin, matutunan at makita Panginoon sa mukha ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Thank you Father for your word today. Indeed, your word is life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, we pray that we will be able to run the race of life with perseverance, with um, single-mindedness, and with success because we are fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. And in His name we pray. Amen.
Praise God for today, my dear brothers and sisters, and we hope to be together again in the next prayer watch. God bless us all.